Hi friends, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we're going to be talking about 10 tulips that I absolutely adore and three tulips that I could definitely live without. I just put in my bulb order with Longfield Gardens a few days ago and I thought instead of going over my full order and talking about all the new varieties, I'll talk about instead the ones that I know perform really well for me here as garden flowers, as cut flowers, and also taking into consideration that I'm in a really rainy climate and that does tend to wreak havoc on certain tulips, especially the very late doubles. And so I'll be talking a lot about how weather plays into my decision as well. But let's just dive right into this list. I absolutely love tulips and I don't know if you're feeling like this, but mid-August, the heat, the humidity, the disease, the bugs, everything, it's starting to feel like you want a fresh start. And it was kind of a delight to go through all the tulips and just know that spring is on the way and we'll have that fresh, new, healthy growth to look forward to in early April. So let's just get right into the list. My number one favorite tulip of all time that I couldn't live without that I bought more of this year is called Negrita Double. And Negrita Double is a double tulip that has a rich purple color, flashes of green on the outer petals. Now, most websites say that these are double late, but for me, they have always been mid-season, which really helps with disease, rotting and spotting to the petals that can happen late in this season if you live in a rainy climate like me. I just absolutely adored these tulips. The stems were nice and thick, the neck was really strong, the bloom was beautiful, and it lasted forever in the vase. So I just highly recommend that tulip, Negrita Double. Now, next up is another one that is definitely always at the top of my list because it really holds up in the rain and that is black hero and i really feel like to grow black hero is to love black hero this tulip is absolutely amazing it's fully double a rich merlot bloom with this amazing satin sheen on the petals these are truly double late for me and of all the double lates I've grown, it's the most disease resistant, and it also does not seem to be damaged when water splashes and or sits on the leaves. It has an amazing vase life, looks great just as a standalone, but also gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous in compote designs. So classy, so elegant. If you follow me, you know I love dark colored flowers. I would just love a black garden versus a white garden any day. I just think that's absolutely stunning. And for me, it's just such a great performer. And it did return relatively reliably, the ones that I left in the ground and didn't pull for cutting. Now, next up, we have Labellopog, and Labellopog seems to really be at the height of its popularity, and I'm not sure it's going to wane in fame anytime soon. It's also said to be a double late tulip, but for me, it was more mid-season in comparison to a true double late like Blue Spectacle or Amazing Grace. Now, what was really, really cool is that this tulip changes colors as the weeks progress. So it starts out almost a true peach with this amazing green streaking along the sides. But then as the time goes on, the blooms continue to open and you get these great mobs coming from the petals and the blooms appear more coffee colored as they mature. I was really shocked how long they lasted in the garden. They had an amazing vase life and they also died very gracefully in the vase. I had made a compote design using a substantial amount of Labelle Epoque and they almost seem to be drying nicely in the vase. So just another reason to grow this variety. Supply is always limited on Labelle Epoque. I was not able to get the large quantity that I wanted this year. I was able to get only 100. So if you want Labelle Epoque, I would definitely order that sooner rather than later. 
Now next up, we have another really beautiful one. It's called Silver Parrot. And I'm a big fan of parrot tulips, but not all parrot tulips are really created equal. But Silver Parrot is so exquisite. And if you're like me, you might be a big fan of Kiana Underwood, who owns the floral design company Tulipina. And she's always using parrot tulips in her designs, spilling out of the vase, so luscious, almost as if the tulip is just dripping over the vase with decadence but sometimes for me the colors are just too overwhelming but what I really liked about Silver Parrot was that it had this wonderful white and a very bold pink coloring to the petals so it didn't have those really crazy colors that you sometimes see it was more bold without being clownish I highly recommend it just like all the parrots that I've ever grown, it blooms late. It had a decent vase life, but like all the other parrots that I've grown at least, it does kind of blow open rather quickly. Now we have a really great tulip that was recommended to me from a girlfriend with some of the most beautiful gardens I've ever seen. This tulip is called Blushing Lady. This has to be the tallest tulip that I've ever grown. It lasted forever in the garden. I mean forever. You will not be disappointed in this tulip's performance. Really strong in terms of how it handled the weather but the coolest thing was it changes colors based on the time of day and how the sun was hitting it. So in the morning, it would be pink and peach before the sun was out. Then as soon as the sun would come out, it would turn into almost this bright orange, almost a bright peach maybe you could say, and the margin seemed more yellow. And then in the evening, it closed up and was pink again. It was just so exquisite in the garden. Now I do recall cutting a few and trying to work them into compote designs, but like all tulips, and some seem to do this more than others, where the stem extends and grows in the vase. I don't see the stem growing in the vase as much with some varieties versus others. Take for instance, La Belle Epoque, Negrita Double. Of course, the stem is growing a little bit, but it's not growing so much that it ruins the look of the design itself. Whereas with Blushing Lady, when I try to tuck those blooms into a compote, and the blooms are really big too, and I picked them a little bit late in the season, so maybe that was the problem. But they just really didn't work out for me in terms of a flower for cutting. But in terms of a garden tulip, I mean, you will just love having it in the garden. Great for kind of the middle of the border since it is so tall. So now let's go back to another parrot tulip. This one is amazing parrot. And sometimes when I see a picture that appears to be oversaturated, I am always hesitant to purchase that tulip thinking that it's not going to look like that in real life. But amazing parrot looked even better and even more saturated in real life. It was one of those rare times where the picture didn't do the flower justice. In fact, I had purchased Amazing Parrot with the purpose of cutting and selling it or arranging with it. I could not bring myself to cut a single bloom because they were so beautiful and so striking and so bold in the garden. So it's really kind of a tropical pink, a flamenco pink, really bold, nothing subtle about this tulip at all. It had a long amount of time where it looked good in the garden for being a late tulip. It did seem to take the weather in stride, but just overwhelmingly, it was so beautiful. And now I'm regretting, why didn't I buy that one again this year? <laughs> I think I'm going to have to amend my order. Now I have some common tulips on this list and number seven on my list is Queen of Night. Some tulips are just good for a long period of time for a reason, and I think Queen of Night is really one that's so reliable, so tough, it comes back well, and it has this wonderful 
deep maroon to the petals. It contrasts so well. I had it planted in front of a really bright red azalea, and I think I have a photograph of that. Um, the contrast of those two colors together in the garden with a little bit of purple was just amazing. Can you imagine a garden that was just full of Black Hero and Queen of Night? I think that would be just so striking. Queen of Night is really great for cutting, really great for market bouquets. Usually Queen of Night is not an expensive bulb. So that's a great one if you're on a budget. I'm definitely always thinking about price. I do not want to spend money on something and then have it fail in the vase. And we'll talk about those three that I don't like soon. But I would highly recommend Queen of Night if you are selling cut flowers at a roadside stand, at a market, it's really worth the money. Now next up we have Exotic Emperor and I think this is one of the first tulips that I ever grew. I'm pretty sure I purchased a bunch on clearance at Lowe's, you know, when they put all the bulbs out for like a dollar, which by the way, they didn't do that this year and I was so disappointed. But anyway, when we first moved here, I bought all these bags of Exotic Emperor for a dollar each, you know, maybe 12, 20 bulbs for a dollar. And what a blessing that was. Exotic Emperor is a Fosteriana tulip, so it blooms really early. It is a beautiful pure white, but it has these wonderful green streaks along the outer petals. But what is so cool is that it lasts a long time in the garden. It returns reliably. I have those bulbs still blooming eight years later. When you use it as a cup flower, it opens and there's something about the shape of the petals that it almost doesn't look like a tulip anymore. It opens, it exposes this really vibrant yellow center and it's just so beautiful. And I don't know how else to describe it except it doesn't look like a tulip anymore. People are constantly asking me when I show pictures of arrangements using Exotic Emperor, what is, what is that flower? So, I just love it. Some other things worth noting about Exotic Emperor is that it forces really well inside, does really well in pots. And also what I did one year is that I held back a lot of Exotic Emperor bulbs in my refrigerator with the intent to fill in the gaps around my garden as everything started to grow in. Sometimes you plant a bunch of tulips and you know, you're imagining this picture in your mind. You see all the foliage pop up and oftentimes there's gaps here or there and sometimes everywhere, right? Sometimes the picture just doesn't come to fruition. Well, the year that I refrigerated all those exotic emperor tulips, I was able to just plop them right into the garden in, I guess it was probably early March, right as the tulip foliage was starting to emerge and just fill in the gaps. And they bloomed just a little bit later than the exotic emperors that I had planted in the fall. But because exotic emperor lasts so long in the garden, they did eventually bloom together and fill in the gap. So that was something really cool that I tried that I thought, wow, I need to do that again because that was really helpful in terms of painting a tulip picture and kind of having a little bit of paint left in your bucket in early spring. Now, number nine on my list is Apricot Delight. And this is kind of a simple Darwin tulip, but I wanted to include it on the list, especially for people who want blooms as early as possible or who wanna be selling blooms as early as possible. And the variety we're talking about here is Apricot Delight. Now, when I hear the word apricot, I think peach, but this tulip is really pink, or I would say maybe a light, dusty rose with a margin of ivory around the petals. That's the best way I would describe it, having seen it in person. But it's very tall. The stems are very thick, very strong, very strong neck, and it just blooms so early. I felt like for that reason alone, I wanted to include it on the list. So now we arrive at number 10 and it's always hard for me to end these lists because I could really just talk about flowers forever and I could probably talk about over probably 100 to 200 tulips and just have this video go on and on. But I really wanted to give you the top 10 
that I feel like are beautiful and worth the money. So number 10, I put as Fanola. Fanola is a beautiful double tulip. It is a white tulip, I guess you would say, with pink edges, but it's really a very, very light, subtle pink, more as if the white color is blushing. And I think it would be perfect for weddings. It was late, but not so late that it was damaged by the rain. And it also had lovely, beautiful green streaks along the side. And the blooms opened very wide inside, much like Exotic Emperor. So that really was a beautiful one, but always hard to choose the last one on a list. Okay, so I had to stand up against the three tulips that I would never grow again. Now, I do sell almost all the tulips that I grow, and I'm in a wet climate, so do take that into consideration. But number one is Antoinette. And I was reading about Antoinette before I ordered it, and it said it was a multi-stem tulip, beautiful yellow blooms, pink margins, and I thought that would be great to have all of these blooms on one stem. That will really fill up a bouquet really quickly. So they came on late, they bloomed very late. They looked like the photograph, which was great. Tall stems, relatively speaking. But when I cut them, and I, have, I don't think I've ever seen this before or since, it was as if the stem turned into a limp noodle, like a spaghetti noodle. I have never seen a stem meld down like that before so quickly. And I tried a couple different tricks. Nothing could revive them. This happened to every single stem. And so I ended up giving some of those away, but almost feeling guilty to even give them away. They were that bad. And then the rest I stuck on the compost pile. So Antoinette, let me know if you've had a similar experience. I did talk to one other grower who said the same thing about Antoinette. So I do have a feeling this maybe is a big problem with this variety, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. So we had to take a little grace break there. But number two, in terms of tulips that consistently gave me problems over the course of many years is yellow pomponette. Yellow pomponette I purchased, I think the same way I got Exotic Emperor. It was the end of the season, Lowe's was clearing them. I got, I don't even know how many, hundreds of yellow pomponette, and what I think was red Miranda, but especially with yellow pomponette, once it bloomed, it just basically collapsed at the neck. It did that sometimes in the garden, sometimes the neck collapsed in the garden, but always after cutting, the neck just didn't seem strong enough to keep that really, really large flower head upright. So that's another one that I wouldn't grow again. The one good thing I would say about it is it does seem to return reliably in the garden. And then last on my list, hey Grace, is Charming Beauty. And I was really disappointed about this one. And this is one where I really like your opinion. If you've grown it before, has this happened? I've only grown it once and I'm in a really wet climate. So maybe that's it. But Charming Beauty, I think was recommended by Florette maybe. And it looked beautiful in the pictures on basically every website. It's this beautiful peach colored tulip but there's a lot of things that you can't tell just from a picture. So Charming Beauty bloomed very late and it succumbed to basically every problem in the book. The blooms molding, disease, spotting on the leaves, failure to open of later blooms. I didn't even know when I purchased it, but Charming Beauty is another multi-stem tulip. And so what would happen is the first bloom would open, but unlike Antoinette, Antoinette's blooms being multi-stemmed, they all bloomed at the same time. Charming Beauty didn't do that. One bloom would open and then you'd have four blooms that weren't open yet. So it was almost impossible to cut it at a point where all those blooms would open. If you cut it when the first bloom would open, sometimes none of the other blooms would open. And then if you waited for later on, then it just kind of looked like a mess, but it just 
was such a huge bummer in terms of the disease that just whipped through those blooms. And it seemed like if they got any amount of moisture on the blooms, they just molded. And it was the only variety that that was happening to and they were all planted in the same bed. So in terms of, was it just kind of this random fluke thing that happened? That's certainly possible. But still with the fact of it being multi-headed and them all taking a really long time to bloom, I just didn't think it was worth it. It was also on the shorter side. And when you think about it, there's a tulip called, and I haven't grown this one in a while, but I think I have an older picture of it. It's called Foxy Foxtrot. A similar color, bigger bloom, much stronger stem, strong neck, long vase life, and that's probably a cheaper bulb too. So Foxy Foxtrot over Charming Beauty, I would recommend Foxy Foxtrot, especially if you're in a wet climate like myself. Well friends, I think that brings me to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see similar videos on bulbs like daffodils or alliums, just let me know. I'd be happy to put that together for you. I hope this was helpful. I'll also put a really long list in the description section of other tulips that I've grown and just a really brief explanation of how they perform for me here in South Central PA, just in terms of a garden tulip, one that we would just enjoy looking at in our flower borders and also ones that are really good for cutting and the ones that I like to choose and the ones that I included on this list are ones that kind of fulfill both roles great garden tulips and great cut flowers so friends I want to wish you a wonderful day please let me know what some of your favorite tulips are and me and Grace will see you sometime soon bye <laughs>